Right then, welcome to Ibarra Ecuador, where round nine of the Ice RAIC Championship takes place at the breathtaking Autodroma de Jose Tobar. Built alongside the serene waters of Lake Yaracucha, this track is picturesque as it is challenging, and being the closest FIA graded circuit to the equator, the championship is heating up, literally and figuratively. The Autodroma de Jose Turbar is unique not just for its stunning location, but also its demanding layout. With its fast straights, technical corners and high altitude setting, drivers must balance precision with aggression to master this circuit and keep their title hopes alive. The calm beauty of Lake Yaracucha might be deceptive though, as the altitude and the proximity of the lake bring unique challenges to the race. And Zach Sweder, we have got two rounds to go and we've got a title to decide. We definitely do. It's definitely going to be all to play here as both Jonathan Guerrero and Douglas Anderson are still tied for the lead. They didn't score points last time out, neither one of them at Road America, so they're definitely going to be in the hunt. But Olaf Odman and Marcus Townen, they're still in the fight. It's going to be a good one, Toby. It is. James Underhill then picked up a penalty last time out. He qualifies last for this race. Andrew Pavia will then move up ahead at P20 next to Philip Blum, who got a podium last time out. Joshua Wood lines up P18 alongside season three champion Toby Byrne. Valeria Campagnari will then line up alongside Kevin Jacobs, season four champion. Then moving on to the next row, 14th sees Gareth Lennon alongside our first championship contender, Olaf Odman, qualifying quite low down, but then it's not far to Douglas Anderson. He's P11 alongside Callum Spencer. Then it's Marcus Townen, the next championship protagonist. are all quite close today, lining up P10. He's alongside Craig McDonald. Christopher Pettersson will then line up P8, and Craig Evans will line up in P7. Tom McDonald will then line up next to championship leader Jonathan Carrera, finally getting a good qualifying. Could he take that lead back today? Ed Cantwell will line up P4. Colin McAllister bounces back to form and Verizon P2, but it is an all sim staff front row lockout courtesy of season two champion Josh Martin alongside podium taker of the season Christian Vrazilov. So a return to form for our season two champion. Christian Vrazilov, though, will want to take bragging rights ahead of his teammate today. So let's see what happens. As we get ready for the five red lights here in Ecuador, the beautiful Lake Yaracucha just behind you. And it's lights out and away we go. Now, who gets the better start from the Simstaff boys? It might actually be Christian Vrazilov. He looked like he got better traction. Can Martin do anything? He's going to have the outside. So Martin does have an inside line, but it's effectively a flat out first two corners. But it looks like Christian Vrazilov has the run, but it looks like Martin has reasserted his lead. I still don't know who's going to get this because we come into a winding corner now and it is Martin retaining the lead as we head into the first set of corners. McAllister's moved up into P3 briefly, but it's been re-overtaken by Cantwell. And as we go onto the next one, it looks like Vrazilov fainting to the inside, but nothing doing to begin with. And it is a pretty clean start so far. We're not seeing too much action going on. Everyone following suit nice and easy as we go through the field to see if anyone's caught out. And yes, we have an accident. Lennon, Diaz, and it looks like Wood and Underhill is reporting no power as well. So we have our first casualties on lap one, Zach. Yeah, which looked like a clean start, but unfortunately there was some casualties toward the end. We'll have to get a replay to see what happened. But a clean start for... Uh, both the sim staff cars as it's looking like a very tight knit corners through the circuit Toby this is a very interesting layout but as they come to that high speed straightaway it's probably one of the longest ones but it's not a full straight it's definitely a right handed kink throughout until it gets uh, up into the first uh, heavy turn it's riding on board with Chris Pedersen now starting on the tires right now Martin on the hards Razzleoff on the medium so different strategies at sim staff while Cantwell has opted for the super soft stove so that's going to be interesting to see how long those are going to wear out especially through the tight midsection as going through the field now Colin McAllister trying to make some moves going into looks like P3 so he'll make the move right there on Ed Cantwell very good stuff but yeah so very interesting the tire situation as well Toby we'll have to see how long the super softs uh, last throughout the race here they performed pretty well out in Road America, so we'll see if that can happen today. Speaking of Road America, here is last week's race winner, Tom McDonald, qualifying quite high up, and he's made it up into P5 immediately, dispatching Jonathan Carrera. So great start form on his side as we come through the final corner, and it's important to remember where Carrera is today because Anderson is only just in the points, and I think Townend just too. So here we go, and DRS is enabled, and Christian Vrazilov is getting a mighty fine tour from his teammate ahead. Now he does have the medium compound attire, 
So there is going to be a slight tyre advantage for this man, but it looks like he's just opting to play it a little bit safe at the moment. No point causing an accident with your teammate on only lap three of 20. And it'll be very interesting to see, like you said, a tyre strategy, because not only do we have different grip levels, it looks like Marty gets all over the curve, and that's left him compromised to an attack from his teammate, Christian Vrazilov, up the inside. Martin goes wide in his defence. Is he going to be able to retain it? He's holding the outside line for the lead of the Grand Prix here in Ecuador. Is Martin going to be able to retain it, or is that job done? He'll throw it back up the inside, all over the curve. Side-by-side -side action for the Simstaff boys, and they're still side-by-side. -side. Then it looks like Vrazilov may finally have got the move done, and he does, Zach. Vrazilov up into the lead. Gives me vibes of when Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg were side by side in Bahrain in 2014, but it looks like it's not done yet as Jars Martin could have the DRS here. Let's see how long it's going to take him to get past Christian Roslov if he is going to be looking to retake the lead. And hopefully, we can see some. Here we go now going into the sweeping right hander. Almost like completely coming flat out, side by side, no good. I don't think uh, Josh Martin had any momentum, it looked like, so I don't know if he didn't just get into the exit, but look at this, Ed Cantwell is going to try to throw it to the inside of Colin McAllister, but nothing doing. So <laughs> Cantwell is going to be thanking his lucky stars that uh, he didn't have one. Here we go, Simstaff 1-2 against Josh Martin side by side, going to make the move on Christian Brazilov, but Brazilov ain't going to fight back, is not going to give that one away, but he's definitely going to keep fighting, as it looks like Brazilov's going to survive that one, so Martin going to have to be patient once again here. And hopefully he can make the move on the DRS straight. But yeah, definitely fighting teammates on this one gives me, once again, vibes of, of Mercedes back in the day with Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg because they were side by side. But obviously they want to try to show each other respect. But you can tell these two boys, they want to race so hard with each other, Toby. They're not in the battle for the championship, neither the drivers or the teams, so it is just purely who is the number one driver. Simstaff, Tom McDonnell looking very feisty on these medium combat tyres. Huge jump on the kerb. You've got to be careful not to go too far to the inside, and I think that's why we've seen some drivers not commit through there. It's because if you get on that kerb, you get launched, and it looks like McAllister might be getting involved in this Simstaff fight. And these, these boys now need to work together a bit because are they starting to hold each other up just a little bit? As we can see, cars all kinds of side by side going through this next section of corners. Agantwell is actually on the grass. So we can see here's our championship leader. He's actually just lost a position or is in the process of losing a position to Christopher Pettersson. So it looks like Pettersson is on the super soft compound of tyres though. So it looks like Jonathan's still not wanting to give it up though. He's got some fighting spirit in him but the battle is ultimately lost to the grippier tyre. And as we were saying, it's very interesting about tyres here because we've always been in such close proximity to Lake Yaracucha. The cooling mist from the water will be rolling onto the circuit and affect tyre temp as Carrera goes a little bit wide into the last corner. Is that going to leave him compromised? It does. Craig Evans is now going to try to capitalise on our championship leaders. Misery side by side. They will go and in that danger zone is Evans. We talked about how violent that curb's on the inside and he does get a little bit over it but it looks like it's only just slowing him down. No accident. Still side by side for the Scotsman and the man from Philadelphia but is the Scotsman going to have his day? Yes, he does. Straight on the inside. Is Carrera able to respond, though? He's holding it around the outside, and he's actually come back around the outside. Fantastic move from the championship leader to regain that place and minimize the damage, as it looks like the Simstaff boys are going at it once again. They definitely are. They're side by side, but Martin retaking the lead as Christian Rasloff might be coming under threat from Colin McAllister. But yeah, definitely going to be an interesting situation with Tyrus. Let's take a look at Valerian Capignar. Let's see what this on board is. Might be what happened with those... Uh, Three cars that happened at the start. Running on board, it looks like behind Gareth Lennon and pile drives Gareth Lennon. Ooh, and then gets like taken up either Philip Blum or Olaf Odvin right there. That was definitely a big hit. Okay, here's Philip Blum. That was a huge hit for Gareth Lennon in the back. Going through the sweeping handers, and there goes the competition with Wood, and yeah, just a whole just pile drives into cars. Everybody just checked up and just chaos on boulders so not much you can do it right there and a man that's been quite famous for on boards especially last week at road america danny diaz looking from the back behind him going through the sleeping turns and just yep there comes the bowling ball so if you ever wanted to know what it looks like to be a bowling pin toby then there you go but just a chain reaction as we're going to get on board with toby Byrne. going to come under threat from somebody to the inside Side by side, that's going to be Wood, and well, actually that might be Pervier and then Wood, so at least both of the uh, J-Step Wood one cars actually got a piece of that one as well, so 
chaos unfolding there, but Toby Burns somehow miraculously made it through that one. He did. So we come down to start finish straight once again, and we can see Christopher Pettersson looking to make another move, potentially on Ed Cantwell, and there it is. That's what I'm talking about. He manages to save a slide, but look at this. He is actually committed to the inside. Christian Vrazilov with a mighty move straight up the inside, and as James Hunt would call that, that is what you call big balls. That is a very risky move, especially to make on the DRS with your teammate, but he does. Oh, a little bit of contact here. McAllister has been hit. Who is that by? Is that Tom McDonnell has sort of pushed to pass in a quite literal sense but the sim staff boys are still side by side they are really going for the bragging rights here today christian Vrazilov holds on and that was a mighty move but was it mighty risky we've got a penalty coming through assuming for that first lap incident who is it who picks up on us it is a 10 place grid penalty it's car 67 which is philip blum and the stewards have deemed him at fault for that pilot and as McAllister complains did you see tom hit me there and which he very much did so we'll see if the stewards decide to take a look at that christian Vrazilov has taken the lead for now though and it'll be Josh Martin's turn to see if he can replicate that. Yeah, let's see if he can learn something from his teammate as we're going to have DRS, but he's going to back off just slightly, so he might be waiting to make a move as Ed Cantwell and Colin McAllister side by side. Ed's going to try to make a move in through this right-hander, but they definitely chuck it into that one and just hope they hit the curve enough to just keep it, you know, on the track enough as we saw, you know, Campagnari almost lose it as we saw. So definitely a... A situation where, as we take a look at the SimStar cars, another one, you know, this is like, what, version 3.5 or how many times these guys have been side by side, but Josh Martin still in the lead. Let's take a look at There we go. Colin McAllister going to make the move, try it on Tom McDonald, but Tom's going to fight back on this one. He's not going to give up as it looks like Ed Cantwell is going to get on Pedersen right now. So Ed's going to try to make some moves with this one. He's going to join in on the party, and that's going to open the door for Craig Evans if these are one of these two make a mistake. So he's going to be looking to make some moves on this one as well. As whoa! Just, and that's what we're talking about, just the curves. Everybody's taking a gamble. And the curves... Have, oh, no! It looks like... There we go. Jonathan Carrero, our championship leader. It looks like he might be out unless he can keep it going. This is going to be huge dividends. I don't know if he can get the car back, Toby. I think he's got a problem with this one. He's pulled over in the grass. What are you doing, John? What's going on? Are you in the race or are you not? You need to get going. We wait, and oh, Jonathan Guerrero retires from the Grand Prix. He is out of the Grand Prix. Could that be huge news for the championship? Where's Douglas Anderson? We will concentrate on that in a moment because Tom McDonnell might be about to split the Simstaff's cars. Tom McDonnell is going to get involved and become a door wedge between Martin and Vrazilov. Tom McDonnell, last week's race winner, has gone up into P2. Where was Anderson was the next question. I think he might be actually out of the points. So Carrera might be okay. We'll see where Anderson is if we can pick him up. He looks like he's actually dropping a few places on the screen there and that's why is that Douglas Anderson in the space of a lap the two championship protagonists are out what has happened to Jonathan Carrero and Douglas Anderson because this is going to be huge dividends for this championship because now this opens the door wide for Marcus Townend and Olaf Odvin and we take a look at our first few pit stops right now so this is going to play as we take a look at Marcus Townend as the moment. He's in 15th. Odvin is the only person in the top three, Toby, in the points so far through pit stops who's in eighth place. So he would definitely want to get a move on, and he's going to get radioed and tell him it's, oh, big contact right there. Christian Vratilov got turned around, it looked like, from either Colin McAllister or Craig Evans. I couldn't tell who that was behind him, but he got tagged from behind. So dramatic chaos within the span of two laps for both championship points contenders. And now Christian Vraslov looks like he's going to be another victim of the DNF train. Dear, dear me, it is unbelievable the action that we are seeing here. And we're going to get some replays to explain what happened. So riding on board here with Jonathan Carrera, as we can see him coming down the back straight next to Lake Yarakucha on your left there, beautiful sight. Let's see what happens. Is there contact or something? Coming into the last corner. And he's just gone off. There's there's no one behind him for quite some time so what happened to Carrera there is that driver error did he have an issue maybe some suspensions broken or something but he just couldn't turn so here's the car who was behind him immediately this is Marcus Townend ironically a championship contender he's gonna watch his championship leader just assuming just drive off the track and there he goes so I've got to assume maybe there was some previous damage that's finally good here so here's Craig McDonald is this what happened to Douglas Anderson coming into the first set of corners does Dougie drop it in a similar fashion, or is he helped courtesy of this map? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that's brutal. He is taken out by Craig McDonnell, and he will have been so happy to see that Jonathan Carrera had just gone out, and it is almost a cosmic event. The universe has said, no, no, this is going to be fair. You're going as well. Yeah, and ooh, Olive got a piece of that one, so Olive Odd been another championship. He's pretty much uh, displacing his displeasure on the radio as he's claiming that, you know, that he got completely annihilated, which was to be fair. You know, but it looked like Dougie, like, kind of went wide and as he was going back on track. But then again, though, I think, you know, I'm pretty sure it's, ooh, there's what happened right there. So that was Colin McAllister taking out Christian Fraslov. So everybody kind of, like, forgetting how to drive within the past, like, couple laps as we lose, like, two of our big championship contenders. And then another one gets tangled up in another mess as we're going to be looking under investigation. This is definitely going to be, and there you go, Craig McDonald and, of course, Douglas Anderson. So... Yeah, a lot of chaos ensuing within the last few laps, but two big names as well. You know, Jonathan Crow and Douglas Anderson losing out is going to pay big dividends as on board with this man right here, Olaf Odfin, is the per currently the only person in the championship fight in the points. He's currently in seventh, but we have yet to see the top leaders make the pit stops, which, ironically, Toby, I'm surprised hasn't happened with the top runners yet because, you know, we talked about the sim staff as whoa. Looking like one of the Maca, Maca cars as well. Look like get a little tail happy there, but he's looking like he's okay. But, you know, especially with some of these super soft guys, I don't think any of the super soft guys have ran. But, you know, you talk about, you know, the, the mist coming off the lake as well. Don't forget how high we are up in, you know, between sea level, Toby, because we're going to be a lot of, you know, temperatures into play as there we go right there. It looks like uh, McDonald is going to go into the pits to serve his. That's Tom McDonald. So... Now we might be able to start triggering the sense of um, the top leaders going into the pits as we're going to be riding on board over in the side view. We'll replay with Andrew Previer uh, throughout the side here. And yeah, he just clips the curb and whoa, geez. Talk about wanting to be on a roller coaster ride, but that you, you mentioned that they clipped the curb on the right hand side and that just sends them a bray. And we got lucky with one of the, you know, and our cars taking it and saving it, but unfortunate for Andrew, he could not save it and end up almost upside down completely. And that is just the unfortunate event of taking the risk and taking the gamble of clipping that right-hand curve to try to, you know, his ooh, big lockup from Audrey right there, coming under pressure from Spencer now. As we got a penalty, this should be for the McDonald on to the Razzloff incident and yeah Kirk McDonald is going to get a 10 place grid penalty as well so the stewards not holding back on some of these penalties Toby so that's two 10 place grid penalties and we got another one let's see who the victim is for this one this will be for there you go another 10 place uh, 10 place grid penalty for Colin McAllister so three 10 place grid penalties all for those incidents Toby so the stewards definitely not holding back on this one the stewards clearly not very happy that people get involved in the championship fight for all the right reasons. Sir Callum Spencer going to the inside of one of the championship protagonists. Up the inside of Olav Obfen. Another brilliant move into that corner. And we've not seen many of them from Callum Spencer this season. So it's nice to see that the race craft is definitely there from the multiple race winner in the ISR AIC. But he takes up the position from Olav Obfen. And that's another position dropped for the championship contender. Now I wonder, does he have any front wing damage from when he was collected by a spinning animal? Anderson. Now that will be very interesting to see and see how that pans out for him. But he's going to try a stick to the back of Callum Spencer. We'll see if that pans out for him. And this is an interesting graphic we've got on the side here. So what's this? Most wins in a single season from the ISR Fact File is obviously Kevin Jacobs with that mighty season last season out. And then it's a four-way tie between Martinson, Martin, Sueda and Carrera. Carrera could improve that if he wins in Brazil. He's not going to improve it today. Uh, and I think if McAllister somehow manages to win today, he will also go to two as he obviously won in round number one this season. So yourself on there, Zach Sueda. We know how difficult it is to win just one race in the AIC, let alone multiple. And there is, I'd say, two cards. Mar uh, sorry, McDonnell and McAllister in the mix to do that today. Yeah, definitely. Not a lot of people who have been able to win more than, you know, two races and let alone get a, a single win. But definitely going to be an interesting fact is, you know, John is going to want to, you know, recover from this and hopefully in the finale in Brazil, you know, tally that. But I think at the most important, Toby, he's going to be wanting to focus on the championship, especially after today. But, you know, sigh of relief to both, you know, you know, not only John, but Douglas Anderson as well getting taken out into that incident. But, you know, this definitely opens up the door for both Olai Bodvin and Marcus Townend, who, you know, now Marcus is actually up in the points now. Odvin up in fifth. So 
the question is now what's going to happen in Brazil. I cannot wait to, have to see what happens there. But um, back in the current race, though, it looks like Craig Evans is going to hit the pits as we take a look at the timing monitor as Ed Cantwell goes almost extremely wide trying to avoid a Ola Bodvin pit. So that was a, almost another incident of somebody going off and probably ruining their race as well. So now we're going to be cycling through the pit stops for top runners. So we're going to see where this plays as we're on lap 15 of 20. We take a look at Marcus going to try to make a move on McAllister. Not a lot of, you know, momentum. So maybe he can get him into the corner, but I think he's just a bit too far back here. So he might be able to get him through the technical sections or just have to play. Hope, you know, Colin goes into a pit so he can get him. But as we take a look at Colin Spencer, he is going to try to get into the podium. Now, talk about somebody who has had all the rotten luck and looking for a podium today, Toby. Colin Spencer finally up into the group. He has had a miserable season. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's excited. Well, not after today of Jonathan being, you know, out of the running now, being taken out. Well, taken out himself, essentially. But, you know, you know, John's been the only one carrying that team. But Spen lucky finally to be in the points running so he'll be happy but he'll be taking a look into the pits but finally getting to see Colin Spencer a man who has so much hardware into the ISR you know he's had a miserable run so he's going to be looking to carry this momentum into the rest of the season as well into next season as cycling through the pit stops now so the net race lead at the moment going to be sixth to Josh Martin, so yeah, Ed Cantwell in the lead right now, but everybody's going to cycle through, so definitely, definitely going to be interesting to see what tires especially, Toby, because if they don't get the right tire with the last few remaining laps, I think it's all going to fall apart for whoever goes on the gamble too wrong. Absolutely, I'm just trying to recall if Ed Cantwell has pitted, because I feel like Ed Cantwell started on the super soft tires, so... Unless he's managed to take super soft to 16 laps, I think he might have snuck in a cheeky pit stop under our noses. So could he be in the lead? If he has to, that's a very difficult strategy to make work because he's pit very early and I believe he might be on another set of super. So we'll keep an eye on that. I might be wrong, but uh, it's one to keep an eye on. So we can see the hard compound runners still running around merrily on lap 17. Not a lot of time to go. And we'll be seeing McAllister in that comfortable lead at the moment. Josh Martin is in P6. One to keep an eye on. And Chris Pettison is the man in between this group. So we can see Marcus Townend, like you said, there's an opportunity on the line here. He's still trying to get into that podium position. He could be on for a second. Oh, and he's actually locked up. So he locks up, trying to go past McAllister. That's going to cost him that opportunity. So as we come into the next set of corners, we round on board with Tom McDonnell. And this contact! Tom McDonnell has spun around Marcus Townend. Is that another championship contender in a dreadful position? And oh, he's actually clipped. Kevin Jacobs coming back across the track there. We've got another. We've got chaos. Absolute chaos unfolding due to that incident with Marcus Townend. We got multiple cars off. And all of that was caused by Tom McDonnell making contact on this man, Marcus Townend, who was in the championship contention. And thank God he has managed to keep the engine running and keeps himself in with a shout. But it looks like he's race could be damned yeah and commentators curse i must have gave for Colin spencer as he got caught up into that one so heavy contact but seems like both mcdonald brothers are just out to fight for this championship and cause chaos and just throw their own because both mcdonald's brothers have been involved in multiple instances with the championship fight so uh, definitely not going to be the favorite team in the in the paddock at the moment right now as we're on board with chris pedersen with just uh, two laps to go, or three laps to go, I should say. Uh, cycling through now, it looks like the pit stops could be over. So I think McAllister, unless he's already pitted at the moment, which I don't think he has, which he might have. We've been going through so chaos, Toby. I can't remember who's pitted and whatnot because all the dramatic instances of the championship fight has, you know, definitely played a role into this. But, you know, just trying to figure out where everything is at the moment. So. Taking a look at Ed Cantwell, looks like it's looking to be a fight with Toby Byrne at the moment here. But, yeah, I just don't know what happened with that one. It just looked like everything was fine, and then just McDonald just came in and just absolutely annihilated Townend. But, as you said, thankfully, thankfully, here's the replay now. We could get a replay, so here we go. Tom McDonald, right behind Marcus Townend, and that is Colin McAllister. The so Marcus goes a little bit wide onto that one, so everything's okay with that one. But then, it looked like, yeah, I don't know what... I, Honestly, that's 100% Tom's fault right there because, I mean, you know, you, you are trying to follow your competitor at the moment. So, you know, Marcus goes out wide on this one. That's fine. Nothing happened on that one. But 
Does he go wide on this one? It doesn't look like he does. He's following the exact same line as McAllister, so just Tom just got impatient, could, could have avoided him. That was just irresponsible driving. You know, you, you, you want to give the person in front of you, you, get, you either go, you're trying to make a move, you got to respect their braking zones, and after all of that, and not just ruining, you know, Marcus's race, all that stemmed as well, and everything unfolded behind them. And so, as we take a look at the other McDonald brother, and yep, and bang, right there. So, everybody checking up on that one. He almost escaped Scott 3, but better off than what he did. As we're riding on board with Philip Blum looking into the right here. That's his teammate, Olaf Odfin, next to him, in front of him. And all the chaos on foes, and yeah. You hear the throttle, it's like he's just gonna say, nope, I'm just gonna pile drive my way through this one, so... Questionable driving all the way around, Toby, but I guess that's safe to say, what better way do you expect with just two rounds left of the championship? We've seen some absolute carnage going on, so we actually, I believe, had a car come into the pits there. Christopher Pettersson pits on lap 19 of 20, so his strategy not working out takes him out of contention here today. Ed Cantwell, though, is the fastest man on circuit by a long shot, and he's going to make use of that speed, is he? Trying to go up the inside of the other McDonald brother, nothing doing, so the incident is being reviewed as rightly it should. And we talked about, obviously, the cooling mist from Lake Yaracucha offering a tyre offset in terms of the temperature, but like you say as well, it does come with lower altitude, or sorry, higher altitude as we're higher up, so there's less available in the atmosphere, which does play some gremlins with the aerodynamics. Now, whether that's affecting some of these drivers' judgments, cars not reacting the way they expect, etc., I don't know, but nothing to excuse the behaviour we have just seen over the last couple of laps, and penalties are going to be issued out very quickly by the stewards' cut and dry contact! Ed Cantwell has just made contact with Craig McDonnell into the final corner! More contact, so it's a five-place grid penalty, very important on there for Tom McDonnell has taken a five place grip penalty another penalty is going to be issued at the same time Valerio Campagnari is going to go to the inside of Toby Burns so we'll try to do both five place grip penalty to car 103 town end and Valerio all by himself is gone and looks like he managed to hit something that kept him on the road penalties coming in left right and centre we've got incidents left right and centre on the final lap and a qualifying ban for Philip Blum for causing a collision as we take a look at the right there on the right hand side that's what happened with Ed Cantwell but chaos unfolding on the final lap. Chris Pedersen right there with uh, somebody else. I couldn't tell who that was cycling through, but chaos unfolding. And it's a wild ride for Camp Agnari. But somebody who has escaped all the chaos, Toby, is Colin McAllister, who has somewhat kept his nose clean throughout this race. He's going to take the win here in Ibarra. So he's going to be thrilled for that one as well as looks like Craig, uh, Craig McDonald could be taken second, followed by Josh Martin. So Josh going from first to third in this one. But surviving the chaos is all about the ISR AIC, and that's exactly what Colin McAllister has done today. We talked about this man, so a penalty has just come through as we go on the cooldown lap with McAllister, who's this for? I'm assuming it is a 10 place grip penalty for Ed Cantwell following that last lap incident. So I think it's Tom McDonald in second because he made contact with Craig, didn't he? But yes. We were talking about Colin McAllister could add himself to the list of multiple winners in the AIC in a single season today. And he has done just that. He joins the list and he's had a torrid season in between Sydney and now. But Colin McAllister bounces back and takes the win here in Ecuador. So Colin takes the win ahead of Tom McDonald. Josh McMartin comes home in third. Not the way race he wanted, but it's a podium nonetheless. Ed Cantwell comes home in fourth with the fastest lap to boot and the Templar's grip penalty for his trouble. He's just ahead of his teammate. Great comeback by the way for Kevin Jacobs today another man surviving the chaos comes back from the back of the grid to finish in the top five Toby Byrne a similar story Philip Blum did the same but took a few cars out on the way Craig Evans scores another four points now an interesting fact about Craig Evans that I'm sure he and the viewers will love every time he's finished in the points this season it's been eighth place so another eighth place for the books for Craig Evans and then it is Nemesis Racing Team claiming a double points finish just at the lower end of the field Valeria had a huge accident at the end there and picked up some suspension damage but he was able to make it round and take it to the chequered flag on the very last lap. He's very lucky to have not DNF there. And Marcus Townend, championship protagonist, just finishes outside. So I think in the most crazy of circumstances, Zach, Jonathan Carrera and Douglas Anderson have survived again. And we will go into the final round again on equal points. What did we say last time that we would probably have our own version of Formula One Abu Dhabi 2021? 
We, I, I called it, Toby. This is going to be exciting, and of all places to have it done, it's going to be in Brazil. And we, me and you both know how crazy Brazil gets in Formula One. So I don't know what the story is going to unfold with this one here, but it is going to be exciting. And so here's the points at the moment. Jonathan Carrero and Douglas Anderson, again, failed to score points just like last time out at Road America. Because of all the chaos unfolding, they are still tied. Tom McDonald has scored and put overtake both Olive Odman and Marcus Townend into third place. So I think this, I don't know how the math that you could probably know a little bit better on this one, but you know, there's still some small shots, at least for Tom McDonald, Olaf Odman, maybe Marcus Townend, I'm not sure. Maybe they'll just have to have Lady Luck on their side, but it's definitely the two favorites are going to be Jonathan Carrero and Douglas Anderson. But it's going to be an exciting race next week, and I cannot wait to see what happens as we take a look through the rest of the standings as well. Uh, Danny Diaz didn't really do much as well. Toby Burns scores some points right there, so he'll be taking a look at Christian Razaloff overtaking him. Joshua Wood and Nemesis Racing's Chris Patterson, 34 and 33 points for Steph Lee. And tied is J Kevin Jacobs and Philip Blunt, so they're going to be having their own scrap, but what a race. You know, I'm I'm just as mad, you know, crazy and out of breath after you. I don't know how this one is for you, but chaos unfolding today. Championship rivals. It, it's going to be crazy. I cannot wait to see what happens. But I guess so I can say, you know, congratulations to Colin McAllister for surviving that. But I don't know, Toby. This is going to come down to the wires. We take a look at the team standings. Absolutely. So I think there is definitely a driver's battle to be settled next time out but then now it looks like there's a team battle to be settled ART Panasonic Toyota have failed to score points in the previous two rounds which has brought Maka Motorsport albeit with some very dodgy tactics into the championship battle they're now only 10 points behind taking the constructive standings and then Ospoos Racing now are only 25 not even 25 maybe about 23 points behind so a good result for them in Brazil could see them snatch the title away as well so and then we have Winfield JSR renowned NAR and Sim Staff all set separated by a point, so the Constructors is wide open as well. But yes, that makes, what, the third round in a row, Jonathan Carrera and Douglas Anderson have failed to score points, and somehow, in the craziest circumstance, if they've survived that, they've survived that. So, I'm begging you guys, one of you needs to score points next time out in Interlagos. It is the perfect place to end the championship, and like I say, I think Tom McDonald, Olav, and Marcus are still within a shout, but they definitely need Lady Luck, but Douglas Anderson and Jonathan Carrera just need to score points preferably one ahead of the other so we will find out next time in Brazil who is going to win season 5 of the ISR AIC championship do not miss it this has been a crazy season it's going to be a crazy end thank you so much for Zach Swade for your help this season that will be your last time with us and I'm sure you'll be just as excited as the rest of us to see what happens next time out but until then everybody thank you so much and see you again bye bye